Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss the back push converter using the discontinuous current mode operation. We will see how we can generate these graphs for this back push converter. Of course, we will do everything step by step in our calculations and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Now, this is the circuit we know for the back push converter, also discussed in the previous example. We see here again a VS of 98 volts DC input voltage. We have a switch here, which is an ideal switch with a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. The duty cycle is 0.3, so 30%. The inductor, the capacitor and the resistor values are shown here. What we want is the calculation of the average output voltage. That is this, the average output current, this and the maximum and the minimum inductor current for this. And we have also the output voltage ripple, peak peak, which is then delta VO. So four unknowns. Now we need to check here in this example that the conduction mode is discontinuous or continuous. Okay, let's look at the solutions. First part of calculations. We start with the conduction mode. We check how what the conduction mode is for the buck boost converter. This is the minimum inductor you need for a continuous current mode operation. So we know our duty cycle, the resistor and the switching frequency. If you substitute it in this formula, you get 24.5 micro -Henrys. So this is the minimum inductor value we need for continuous current mode. But we have 20 micro -Henrys. So 20 micro -Henry is smaller than 24.5 micro -Henrys. That means the inductor current is discontinuous. That means actually the following, the waveforms for inductor current and also the inductor voltage have the following forms. We have a situation where you have the current of the inductor will be going up linearly and then going down, but at some point it will also stay zero, this part, because of this discontinuous operation of the current. For the inductor voltage, you see it is Vs for the DT, first part, which is when the switch is closed. And when the switch opens, you have a part which is then Vo, but there is also a part which is zero, and that is again due to that discontinuous operation. So we can use volt second balance for the inductor using this graph in red and then we can write the following. We can say Vs times dt, that's shown here, plus Vo times d1, t is zero. This is the expression from the volt second balance. We can now divide by t because left and right hand side can be easily simplified in this form and express now the output voltage in terms of the duty cycle D and D1 and also the input voltage Vs. We know the D, duty cycle, we also know the Vs, but in order to calculate VO, we also need to know D1 here. But how do we find D1? So that is another analysis we need to carry out. But maybe it can be easier to find what the formulas are we need. Let's first designate here the source current given here in pink. And the source current is equal to the inductor current when the switch is closed. So that means this part where there is a charging, you see that in pink, where the switch is closed, then you have the source current is equal to the inductor current. When the switch opens, there is no inductor current anymore, uh, the source current anymore, that means source currents go down. And that keeps also, uh, and will be then zero for the rest of the period. So this is the waveform you have for your source current. Okay, we can use that waveform here given in pink to calculate the other parameters. So we can say the following. There is a power balance. In the ideal case, the power supplied must be equal to the power uh, absorbed. So the P in power input is equal to power output. Power input is the DC voltage source Vs times the average voltage of the source current Is, which is equal to the output power, which is then the output voltage squared over R. You can also do here, of course, in the, the output current times the output voltage. Let's call this equation number one and then use this later. With the average source current using the geometry here, can be calculated using the area here divided by the full period which is then also t so this is the triangle area so half times dt times the peak peak of the inductor current and divided by zero it is divided by t 
Why is this peak peak of the inductor current? Because the uh, minimum inductor current must be zero because there's also this continuous conduction mode and the maximum will be also the peak of the IS and also for IL. Okay, now if we now write this such that the T's here will cancel out, we have now an expression for our average source current. Let's call this equation number two. We move on and also discuss the inductor voltage for closed switch. So when the switch is closed, as said before, the VL will be VS, exactly. But the VL is also given by L times the DIL DT. So what do we do? We can take the um, in the limit what we have the delta IL, which is then also for DT approximated to delta T. But delta T for closed switch means DT. And that is shown here. So we have an expression what can be used here in this formula. So taking this together, you have an expression which shows us that the Vs is equal to L times delta IL over DT. Okay. And we can rewrite this in form of delta IL is equal to this expression. Now we can now call this equation number 3 and substitute this equation number 3 in equation number 2 as shown here. Now what do we have? We have now an expression of duty cycle, input voltage, the period of switching and also the inductor value. And this is now we see here the, the, the squared term here in the expression. Let's call this equation number 4. This equation number 4 can be substituted in equation number 1 in here. So we get actually the following. So we get Vs times this is equal to Vo squared over R. That can be uh, written also as Vs squared. D squared T over 2L is equal to Vo squared over R. Next step is multiply the left and right side by the R. So we have an expression for Vo squared. So we have this expression. Now you have now two solutions here. One of them is with a minus sign, the other one is with a plus sign. So we will know that will be an inverting. So that means we get a minus sign here. So that will be our solution here. You see now the VO output voltage will be a, a function of the duty cycle, input voltage, but also the resistor in the inductor and the switching frequency. So the average output voltage can be then calculated using this formula. We have now here everything and it will give us minus 46.49. The average output current can be calculated using Ohm's law, so you just this value divided by 10, so you get minus 4.649 amps. The maximum and minimum inductor current. The maximum inductor current is just the delta IL, which is shown here. So when you substitute here the values, we have here 14.7 amps. And the minimum inductor current will be zero because we are in the discontinuous current mode, as shown here in this graph. Okay, let's collect them here and then continue with the output voltage ripple, which is then question D. The next one is our output voltage ripple, delta VO. Now we know that we are in the discontinuous current mode operation. For discontinuous mode operation, we have a different formula for calculating the output voltage ripple. And that's shown here in the previous case where we have the continuous current mode. This was just a D. Now we have replaced it by 1 minus the square root of 2 times the inductor value, the switching frequency over R. Again, I leave the details out how we drive this. Now we need to use this formula and when you get that, you get here 0 0.0037, so 0.37% of this ratio. Now when you now use the value here, you can say that delta VO will be then 0 0.0037 times our output voltage, of course the magnitude, and it will give us 171 millivolts as our output peak peak ripple. Okay. And the maximum allowed ESR of the capacitor that can be calculated using this formula. This is again an approximation. You see here the small letter RC, which is our uh, ESR, so the equivalent C resistor of the capacitor. Since the peak peak capacitor current is equal to the maximum inductor current, which is also the peak peak inductor current. Now, in order to calculate this equivalent C resistor for the capacitor, we rewrite this formula and you have this. You know that the IL max is 14.7 milliamps. We just determined our delta VO that will give us approximately 11.6 milli ohms. This is the maximum allowed equivalent C resistor for our capacitor if we choose our capacitor. The average diode current is given by this formula. The diode current will be flowing in this direction, the forward uh, conduction mode of the diode, and this is our output current, so they are in the reverse direction. 
there is no average capacitor current that means the diode average current is equal to minus the output average current and that is the minus of what we have calculated so this is shown here okay let's bring everything here and then look at the simulator circuit uh, and also the results from there this is the circuit in the simulink we have drawn you see the switch here the inductor the capacitor and the resistor the applied voltage source vdc and we also see here the um, directions of the scope here will we have five plots so we will discuss the plots also in the next slides okay looking specifically now to the city state output voltage and the output current those are from the question a and b in the uh, yellow here you see here the load current output current and the light blue one is the load voltage now if i lay, check the labels you see here this is the output current is minus six four i mean minus 4.668 amps and the output voltage is minus 46.50 volts now this is very close to what we have calculated here so this is nice now let's now zoom in in the plot and see also the peak peak values and other uh, parameters and values we have calculated and also check that the red one is our inductor current the green one is inductor voltage and the yellow one is the uh, load current again the light blue load voltage and this pink one is the capacitor current now let's start with the green one we know that the maximum inductor voltage will be vs for switch on and will be Max minimum inductor current will be then VO, which is for switch closed. Now you see here this one, and there is also a part where the switch is still closed, but this is the discontinuous mode. There will be then a jump to zero volts for the inductor uh, voltage. And these are the values we have calculated, or we can calculate. And you see from the labels here that this close to 98 volts for maximum, and for the minimum it is minus 46.6 volts. So this is close to what we have calculated. Looking at the inductor current you see the maximum of 14.7 and the minimum is here approximately zero so this is a 5.15 times 10 to the power minus 11 so practically zero and this delta peak peak current for the inductor is 14.7 as we have calculated so that's also checked let's also look at the load voltage because that is important because we see here the maximum of minus 46.48 and the minimum is shown here, minus 46.69. And the peak peak here is 210 millivolts. But we had calculated 171. So there is a yeah, significant error, you can say. So the formula might be not exactly as we should have. So the model might be insufficient in this case. But there is a, a too much output ripple, definitely the case. How can we, as an engineer, make this correct for example if you say okay i need to have this 171 millivolts because i was yeah heading towards that ripple voltage you know that the capacitor will affect the um, ripple voltage of course you can change also the resistor but it will also change the current and other parameters so the easiest way to change the ripple voltage without changing the other parameters significantly is making the capacitor larger so then will you go down by the output peak peak so this is fine for the output uh, the, for the inductor current and also the inductor voltage was perfect but this is uh, not as we have expected so there is a slight error there all right this was our example considering the buck boost converter in the discontinuous current mode we have seen how we can calculate the parameters and we have checked our values using simulink simulations if you have any questions please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible don't forget to like and share our videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.